All right, it's been a few weeks since we 3D printed the bumper for the Porsche. Part of this design, we have this light bar that's made out of plastic. At the time I had a strip of LED lights that I could simulate, you know, like running lights. Um, today we're actually gonna get into how to make your own running lights. And when I say running lights, I mean like the lights that are on, but it could be like turn signals, just I'll call it like walk up lights. When you walk up, you want it to flash or something. So we're gonna go through that today, how you can do this for your own car. For today's sponsor, we have a jump starter from Jesper. Mm, it's got a very nice carrying case. That's looking really good. All right, we've got the jumper cables. This is a charging cable and adapter. All right, when it's plugged in, it's got the blue light indicators that shows you kind of the state of charge. It's also got one that's flashing, so it's kind of like half full and it's charging to three quarters full. The Jesper 4120A will jumpstart anything from a motorcycle all the way up to a 10 liter diesel truck. 4120 is the peak amperage that this device supplies. The starting current is 600 amps and will operate from all the way down to minus 20 degrees Celsius all the way up to 60 degrees Celsius. It only weighs 770 75 grams and it's 88.8 .8 watt hours of energy. From empty to full takes about eight or nine hours. With that energy, it can jumpstart a car 70 times. You can also use it to charge your phone. All right, so here's the on off button and then that turns on a flashlight, which is always handy in an emergency situation in a car or just if you're taking it camping. Flashes strobe, slower or back off. It also comes with this. So at first I wasn't quite sure what it is, but it plugs in right here. And this is kind of the equivalent of this. So most cars you've got like a little 12 volt outlet or these used to call a cigarette outlet. Can now get plugged into here, run all the 12 volt things off of this. So you can see that just turned on, camera turned on. So very cool. And it wouldn't be complete without trying to do the jump start. We're gonna show you what happens if we put it on the wrong sides. It gives you a red light and it says reverse. And if we put it on the right way, it says correct. We're ready to go. And as you saw, it is on its way out. Out, so it struggles to crank over. I'm sure with this one though, it'll start right up. So I'll tell you one of the worst feelings is being away from home and coming out to your car and finding that it just won't start. So I think that's why this product's really important. It just gives you that safety, that peace of mind that, hey, we're good. The other thing is I've actually been in situations where I've had a colleague or friend and they had the car that couldn't start. And so I was able to jump them without having to kind of, you know, drive over and have front to front. So that was really good as well. Um, I was also able just to kind of say, hey, take this um, on your way. So if you have any troubles, you'll be good to go. So again, if you don't have something like this, I highly recommend it. I always think products like this are great for emergency situations. So if you don't have one in your car, I'll leave a link in the video description. You can get one today. So we're working inside today and I'm gonna show you some of the things we got and how we're gonna hook them up. I did buy a kit once for Arduino and kind of played around with it for a little bit. So I know some basics, but again, uh, very much a novice. So first, this is just an LED light strip. This was, I think, 17 bucks on Amazon. So it looks like it's got some mounting things, leads. So I'll go ahead and set that aside. So this is a DC to DC step down converter. So this will allow us to step down from like say the 12 volts to the five volts or whatever that the, the uh, this one needs. Oh, and this was like uh, 12 bucks for a four pack. All right, and this is the ESP32 development board that's compatible with the Arduino. And this was 17 bucks for a three pack. I think I already had some, but I went ahead and bought some more 1K ohm resistors. I think it was four bucks for a hundred of them. So we're gonna go ahead and open the uh, converter here. All right, so one of the first things we need to do is this has got a little uh, screw adjustment here on top and we need to change it. So basically it's gonna get 12 volts in right here on the ends and then on the outs, we just wanna tune that so it's five volts. All right, I also just have a 12 volt power supply. So I'm gonna hook the power supply to there, look for the reading and do the adjustment. All right, so we got 12 volts in, 12 volts out. All right, the first board didn't seem to wanna to adjust. So we open another one, see if it's just a defective board or maybe a defective user. So it says 12. Yeah, it's like not a, wait, this doesn't give you great confidence, does it? Yeah, I don't know what the deal is. I can't adjust it. All right, I may have just not been patient enough. Seems like it might be working now. Yeah, so it's going down now. So we're gonna go ahead and set this one to five. Call that good enough. Oh man, that was really good. It's weird because like it doesn't adjust for a long time and then all of a sudden it's like, says, oh, you're adjusting. So don't know what the deal is, what causes it to wake up, but there's been a couple boards here that I've gone through where I've given up, it'll start working. We're gonna get into software and coding. I'm gonna walk you through some of the basics because I also needed to be walked through the basics. So if you haven't used Arduino before, you just navigate to their site and download it. Essentially, Arduino is just a little circuit board that can allow you to program and do lots of things. I was using a special ESP32 development board, so I needed to get an additional add-on to make sure everything was compatible. 
once that's been enabled, Arduino always wants to know what board you're using. So I navigated to the board and selected it. So with the ESP32 development board or development module selected, have to make sure you're selecting the correct port. So this is when you plug in the board to your computer, you make sure to select the port so it can communicate with it. For this project, I was working with Ian and his team at IJ Design Studios. They helped with the initial programming and made sure I got everything set up correctly. All right, so this is one of the boards. I'm gonna get the cord and see if we can transfer the program to it. All right, we'll try uploading. Okay, so it says done. So this is a breadboard and it is a very much a prototyping way of connecting circuits. So basically um, things in the row are connected, excluding this, things in this row are connected. So the, they're not connected across this middle trough, but I'll just show you real quick. All right, so just turn my multimeter on to continuity. So we got continuity. And you can see here if they're in the same line and we connect there and there, it's got continuity. So again, things in that line got continuity. However, if we go across that bridge, no continuity. Go in that column, no continuity. Down here though, on this last row, it, it, we do have continuity if we go across that row. We do not have continuity if we go in that direction though. So that's kind of the basic uh, operation of this breadboard. It allows you to kind of eliminate a few wires. We're gonna use this real quick to set up our circuit. Go ahead and plug in. Yeah, nothing. After talking to Ian and his crew, we did a little conference call and we got everything wired correctly, changed the code. So we've got this now to a place where we can actually get the LEDs working. Let me show you. All right, so that's kind of reverse lights. So that's kind of blinker. Let's see other blinker. I think that's just brake lights. So we can change the number of pixels or LEDs and you saw that kind of the blinker was pretty close on either side. We've got a really long section and we can even connect it to another section. We can change the number of pixels to make this a really long string. Also the number of tail pixels, that's kind of, I'll call it the wraparound for the bumper. And then the other ones like the reverse lights, brake lights, things will come on. So we can change the number of pixels to meet our needs. All right, we're gonna change the number of pixels. Well, I'll just show you right here. So we've got 30 pixels. So if I do this, let's see. So that's like the left blinker, right blinker. It's kind of like brake lights. So anyway, you can see it's just this section here. So we're gonna go ahead and try and do the whole thing. This next one is the number of tail pixels. So that's like how wide you want your blinker. So we're gonna go with, let's go like 30. Well, I didn't like that. So let's, let's go to 100. Maybe it's like 128. Well, let me take a second to figure it out. All right, I noticed uh, I can go up to 50. So I think there's gonna be something in the code, like right here maybe, where it's got some hard numbers. It looks like it's the color though. Anyway, we'll figure out exactly where the limitation is and fix it in the code. All right, I've been working on my setup here, got everything to work. However, it only goes up to about 75 LEDs and then it won't go anymore. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. It might be a power supply issue, but you'll see it's not all the LEDs. So I think this has got 144 LEDs on one strip and I can't get it to go more than 75 before it stops working. So I think it's a hardware issue. I think we'll probably just bump up our power supply and that will probably fix it. All right, we finally got things figured out. We had to go to a previous version of the ESP32 board. For some reason, it was limiting us to 75 LEDs. So now we got it the full strip, 144. I'll show you real quick what it does and how we can change it. All right, so here's the original program. I think this is the wake up one. So basically it just kind of expands, goes out, comes back. That's kind of the wake up one. So that's brake lights, that's turn signal, reverse, and then the other turn signal. So we're just gonna switch this. So the number of tail pixels just kind of, it's like how many pixels on the end do you want to be your blinker? And so right now it's 10, so we're gonna turn that to like, we'll say 35. Number of reverse pixels, that's like how many white lights are coming back at you, we'll go with like four. And then we'll go ahead and send that to the board. Okay, I believe it's ready. So you can see now we've got 35 pixels that will do that. And then 
we said, I think five for the reverse. You can see that the reverse happens just after the turn signals, more inboard of the turn signals. It's the other one, brake lights. So this whole arrangement, this is breadboard. I've just got these other kind of circuit boards and they're all just a little bit messy and definitely not something that you would put in a vehicle at this point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break out some different boards and kind of solder up some connections, make things look a little better, confirm that it works. All right, here's a basic diagram of what I'm gonna try and do. Basically, there's gonna be five signal inputs and then two 12 volt inputs. So essentially like power and ground. And then these are gonna be signal inputs to do like turn signals or reverse brakes, things like that. Output, we've got one signal output for the LEDs. And then we've got power. This is like, I think five volt power plus and minus and then five volt power plus and minus. We've got two of these boards cause I'm gonna use two LED strips and wanna make sure we got enough power for everything. So I'm going to go ahead and start wiring and figure out what kind of plug I've got and what I wanna use. I'm gonna be going from traditional breadboard to this is like a perf board and there's lots of different kinds you can get. I got this kind. It's got several that are kind of linked together. So I think that'll help. And again, I don't have a ton of experience here. So I'm just gonna show what I do, but listen to those people in the comments. They'll have better suggestions than me. So I picked up some of these connectors. They've got the pin spacing that'll go right into these boards. And this will allow me to kind of connect wires to and from various spots on the board or just from someplace else to the board. So I have my handy dandy soldering iron and it's okay. So the tip of my soldering iron is bent just a little bit and that's not like by design that's I dropped it but because it's bent I kind of liked it. In theory we get this tin so it's got some solder on it. Got some thin gauge solder. We'll put the various pins or boards wires whatever in place and we'll just heat up that connection apply a little bit of solder some flux and get things in place. All right so I've got my power in. I've put this board on and I just soldered the few pins that I'm actually going to use like ground and power. These are signal out and one is, sorry, one is signal out, the other ones are signal in. But uh, yeah, so they're connected through these strips. So we'll go ahead and um, put on some of the other things we need. All right, as I've got some of the components on this other side, I am starting to do, these are like the traces, essentially connecting wires. Got all the uh, diodes and resistors in place. We'll go ahead and solder them from the backside. All right, it's probably a good thing I can't go any closer, but uh, I believe I've got everything in place and soldered. I'm gonna go ahead and start connecting some of the wires. See if we can power it up and make sure this still works. All right, these are uh, incoming signal wires. This is like 12 volt power. These are the connectors for LED strips. So we'll go ahead and plug things in and hope that everything's good. I worry that there's gonna be some solder bridges or something that's gonna make some sparks, but we'll see. All right, so I'm gonna plug it in. I think there's like a 50% chance it doesn't work. Even though like we tested on the breadboard, there's something that I probably flipped or got backwards or didn't solder in right or something's not gonna work. But We'll go ahead and try it out. Plug in the power supply, so look for sparks. I think these boards light up somehow and I don't see them lit up. All right, you probably can't see, but some of the very first wires I did that I put into these boards, I soldered onto the boards. I didn't necessarily solder them onto this board. 
So I just missed, uh, I think, two or three solder points. I'll do that and then hopefully we're working. All right, so I think I've got these soldered now. So we'll try it one more time. Hopefully we're in business. Oh, still no. Well, we're better. These ones have power now. This one's got a little light on it. So we might be there. Let's just give some of these signal wires some input. All right, I think we're there. All right, I never know how the camera will pick this up. It might look flashy, but uh, this is kind of, I'll call it, I've got the brake lights on and then I'll try and turn on some of the other lights. So that's turn signals. That's reverse lights. It's just solid brake lights. So again, I can adjust all the intensities, but yeah, I think we got it. So the boards don't look too hot. It is a little interesting that one board's hotter than the other though. Oh, that's probably because that's the one that's powering the lights right now. So the other board um, is kind of a duplicate for when we use two LED strips. And nothing looks hot on the back, so we're good. Okay, I'm taking my mess to the car here. Something about like that. All right, we'll get things plugged in. So that's the turn signal. The cool thing about this is I thought, ah, I want to go around a little bit further. It's just a program. I think I've chosen like 20 LEDs so I could go like 30, 50, I could do whatever I want. All right, uh, I'm just gonna change the program here real quick. It's 35 for the blinker and it wasn't going very far. So we'll go like 50 or 60. All right, we'll go load this and see what it looks like. Okay, it is done. So plug it in and try it out. So that seems like it's further around, doesn't it? So that's red. I don't remember what purple was. Oh, purple's the other side. Yellow. I think yellow's reverse, maybe. Yeah, so that's reverse lights. And then blue, I think, is kind of like your party lights. Cool, cool. Now, I don't have the LEDs perfectly positioned, but that's the cool thing about, uh, I'll call it programmable LEDs, is you can have them do whatever you want. Last changes to the wake-up animation. I like it. I think it looks really good. So that's just brake lights, I think. Get all my hands are not steady. Oh, there's blinker. I like that. I think it looks like a good distance, right? You can see it kind of flash over. So I haven't done that much with Arduino. So this is kind of one of the first projects. I've gone through some tutorials, but uh, if you're looking to get into Arduino, this is a really cool way to do it. That's gonna do it for this time. I am gonna get some boards made. So rather than just the uh, soldering job that I did, I'm gonna get some real boards. I am gonna make these boards available. So if you wanna do your own LED project or wanna do something like that, put a note in the comments and we'll get in touch. So that'll do it for this time. See you next time. So you saw it was only kind of that. Stop it, dog. Trying to record. I need to sneeze. Mm. Sweet. So the... Stop it. <laughs> <laughs>